another. You uh, max the honors, but you haven't met Aleph. Aleph Adil is a writer and performance artist um, from Cyprus as well, uh, whose work evolves around memory and design. Uh, she participated in the <coughs> HRC Ottoman project I mentioned before. <coughs> Sorry, the peanuts. Drink some more. And she gave a wonderful performance during the <laughs> exhibition uh, we had um, at the Pearls Gallery during the conference for, uh, of the, for the project. And she is also a regular contributor to the Times uh, Literary Supplement, but she is also an academic, uh, and uh, here she has uh, a number of publications on issues of memory, uh, performance, uh, and identity. Uh, so, Stephanos will uh, start, uh, followed by Anna. Um, well, I'm, I'm happy to be paired off with Alan once more. We met in uh, 2003, once the checkpoints opened in Cyprus and we were able to cross. And we, um, we became, we decided we were the Anglophone, uh, we were the post-colonial Anglophone uh, writers. Soon since we um, discovered a, a few more, we became a kind of community member for writers. And we often do things together. Um, I, um, I'm going to read two or three poems. And the first one is called Rhapsody on the Dragoman. As many of you know, who are into Ottoman history, the, the Dragoman was the um, highest officer representing the Raya, so the Christian minority in the Ottoman Empire. Um, and I often, one of my favorite monuments in Cyprus is the house of Haji Yorkaitis, who was the last dragoman. So I'm um, often inspired by his persona for my poetic voice because, um, as someone that's worked between the cultures, um, there were translators, interpreters, diplomats, and they had a lot of power and often got came to stick in. Um, <laughs> And um, besides the house, I was also reading a travelogue from an American in the 19th century. The word dragoman comes from the, uh, the Arabic word terjuman. Terjuman is terjuman in Turkish, and became dragomanos in Greek and dragoman in English. So, um, and I was reading a travelogue, an American lady was saying, um, You will need a Tell your man when you're traveling in Egypt, but um, don't. Um, they're, they're just servants, so don't let them sit inside the carriage with you. So she was kind of being uh, So that was one of the lines that inspired me. It's in two parts. Um, <coughs>
When hearts hung in the buzz of morning light so bright as silences, the lady arrived at the city gate and waited for the casual man. She had requested in a letter sent from Egypt someone versed in her language to accompany her to the sublime port. Only I, among the Raya, spoke her tongue from the island in the northern sea. Today, following my companion's counsel, I shed my kofta and bed and present myself with boy and by and waistcoat in a style after, after the French. I bow before she presumes to scrutinize the measure of my wisdom. If I am a full servant or a learned scholar, I do not climb inside the carriage. I swiftly step up into the box and stand and take my seat next to the driver while I instruct the porter boy. If he received back sheaf to say thank you, as her kind expect, and reveal neither gratitude nor displeasure. She need not know our measure of her generosity, only count the day's profit within our own walls. We do not know if she desires the sweetness of the Sultanina grape or some other island sweetness. When heaven wants to speak, it needs few words to open gateways here, there, and elsewhere. Trees grow in silence, as do the big palms lining the river inside the city wall. Along the path of Hermes, the wind will track the language down, as we track the dust of love in the mausoleum smell of morning, jasmine turning putrid. When the evening drops stealthily, I will retire to the dragoman's house, where hot stone will transform my body to vapory waters, absorbing the contours of the cypress with long shadows of night in a crimson trance, penetrating the skylight of the Haman. Yearning neither joy nor melancholy, time to appease by traveling consciousness. On the divan, I will translate from my companions verses of the Tajman al Ashwak of Ibn Arabi. My heart takes on any form. Um, the second one I, uh, I read, I, I'm going to read is from um, this collection that came out soon after the checkpoints open, which was uh, in 2003. And in the first um, August, which, I mean, August a really sweltering hot in, um, in Cyprus. And I was um, reading some French love poems, and I came across the lines, A tel prix à peser ma chaleur Cyprien, at what price to appease my Cyprien heat. Um, and of course, the Cyprian heat is Aphrodite. This is Pierre de Ronsard's sonnets. And he's, um, the Cyprian heat is the passion of love and Aphrodite. Um, and I was by the sea near Salamis, and we saw these statues and Aphrodite, headless Aphrodites and so forth. But I interpreted it in my own Cyprian heat, which was at that time the negotiations for a solution and the referendum and so forth. Um, so this is what I was imagining. To not be deluded, I had a split tongue, moving between reluctant whispers and inaudible pulse articulating peace. You know you will never find in the love of your dead muses and the platonic lambda how to reach pure sound. No matter if the signs are Greek or Turkish, I lose my way, even when there is only one way to go. This, the police sniff and tell me my hallucination is out of order, and their dogs label me under control. I slip away looking for relief in everlasting summer or everlasting death. And when I find you, I strip you naked in reckless desire for your disease. Or was that only in my dream? I do not know if it's your malady, I wonder, if I am diseased by your desire. 
I negotiate the palliating mirage, and my body sizzles in my Cyprian heat and rolls in flames into the blue of the sea. Embers evaporate in the clarity of the moon and the tempest of the stars. Weaves halos, fudging stories of Roman phantoms in an overlay of cities with statues of your damaged fantasy who lost their heads and genitals in impetuous recklessness or in the world's tormented ideology. And I pound your words, chasing poetry of merely mind or merely sexuality, two pure white butterflies paying off this slack in broken stone. So don't believe me, for different demons speak within me, all looking for their missing parts. Um, and finally, I'll read one more called uh, Carpasia. Um, Carpasia is the, um, it's the peninsula, the kind of panhandle peninsula of the island, the kind of tapers off into the sea. And this was written after one, um, this is a place I like to go to and take a pilgrimage to at least every summer. My own um, place of birth was at the beginning of that peninsula. So it's, um, it's something that takes you back to my childhood memory. It's going to the point at the end. And this was, um, and this particular summer, there was a drought in the sun um, on the island. And we were at the point, and there was a huge storm, and all the electricity went out. I think no, there was no rain in the rest of the island, but it was like a very special moment. Um, and it's also um, this wild donkeys, there's beaches, there's turtle beaches, and so forth. Carpasia. Do you remember when the sun moved into Virgo and we were pulled against gravity to a thin place, careful not to tread the rhizomes of the calamint by the rock, where the holy friend found his sacred spot and where there is too much sky, a sea swallows the sun. And in the purple hue, turtle midwives come from far away to bring the science of nature to the nature of departure as the wall of shell and liquid tur turquoise embraces a flesh of fragile of green. And when night fell with a torrent of rain and the lightning struck the death of drought, while the candle flame danced the Leila Lin, and in response our bodies swayed as the island's hull was turning, till they cleaned the fields fresh. For the wild and wide-eyed donkeys, bashful as they sing to us their king. Or mass, or mass, I may be famous for the mass. And with gravity, we turn to ask, is this the homeward way toward a fertile Messiria lying fallow? The air so thick you cut it with a knife, and houses waste like time itself or spaceships that have lost their ground. Not sure if in this place their time is long or short. This plain was once the old sea between two islands, was once my dwelling, till the horizon lifted to let us through. So I still wonder how to write thick poetry, how to chant for a thin place. Thank you very much.
somehow I'm undercover today. Um, and I'm going to read you a series of poems around memory and cyclists. And I tried to make them very port based, being literal about the theme of the conference. But I hope you'll allow me, I hope you'll think of this as a paper at the conference too, because poetry has been at the heart of my research, as well as being an academic. When I, I, I can really make no distinction between those kinds of inquiry, although of course there are lots of rules. So I, I want to start off with a poem about memory, which is called Something to Do with the Color Yellow. Now, of course, immediately that's bringing to mind Freud's essay on memory. Um, but it's also around narrativization of memory and Penelope. And I, I'm from Cyprus, and so you're not surprised that I'm obsessed with Hellenic gods <laughs> and technology. You're not, you're not surprised by that. Um, now, my compatriots are because a, a small minority of Cypriots are Turkish Cypriots. And so it's not a heritage that belongs to them. And in fact, politically, it's a heritage uh, that the, um, the, 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 the Greek-speaking world uses to assert themselves as a chosen people, right? And it's also, from Freud, um, a, 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 a tradition that we use to kind of protect patriarchy and democracy. <laughs> um, so, it's, it's, but it's my way in, so it's my way into being this eternal stranger. What to do with the filthy illusions that life could be a story? What to do with the name that replaces the body, the ink that replaces the breath, that demonic transubstantiation? the life woven from slim threads of opportunity, possibility, knotted with slugs of undigested memory. You wear it like a cloak of sky. Remember to unweave the cloth in the darkness of each night, to begin again in the morning, like silence taking leave of obliterating speech. The story only exists when it's over, when the life is finished. I will not have the story over yet. No shroud of narrative, no robes like glory. I am naked, weaving and unweaving, waiting for hope to begin again. So that's my Penelope. My next poem is called Harbour, and I have a couple of poems here about Kyrenia Harbour, one of the very prettiest, prettiest places of Cyprus, and one of the places that is occupied and that was taken as so particularly a painful lieu de memoir for, uh, for Greek Cypriots. So as a Turkish-speaking Cypriot, it's important that I uh, talk about that. But this is a very Turkish Cypriot poem. It's written before 2003, and it's in that time when Turkish Cypriots, now they can get uh, passports via the Republic, but where they have this internationally unrecognized piece of shit paper that can't get them anywhere. Right. So they have a nationalist little mini identity, but they can't travel because they have this internationally unrecognized passport. So the poem is about going to visit sites. I, I have a British passport, like my British traps. Um, yeah. As do many Cypriots from that colonial thing. But anyway, but so this is being in the harbour and these people who are kind of stuck there. So um, that sense of a place forgotten. Do you want your cards read? Well, what could they tell you that you have not already hoped for and feared? The same cobbled steep streets coiling down to the embrace of the tiny harbour. That route you've retraced a thousand times with stumbling steps, awake and in your dreams. Grazing familiar strangers' faces on sultry nights, so still. You wonder where is the time slipping away with the waves that lap the shore. I'm leaving soon, you lie. With an insolent look in their eyes, they reply, Yes, so am I. 
And the thing about uh, desultory grazes, desultory gazes, grazing familiar strangers' faces, is just that it's very interesting because just at the end of the harbour is uh, Kyrenia Castle, very interesting Ludo memoir, my great grandfather was in prison there. Just behind that is a, is a police station, but then just behind that is a little park where a lot of cottaging goes on. I don't understand this, what my friends have told me, I don't understand that so near the police station, unless the police station take their brains there. Right. <laughs> uh, so, that's a little bit of social history. Um, uh, this poem is also set in Kyrenia, and it's called Expatriates. And we're getting a bit Eurydice. <clears throat> Last night I dreamt I kissed you in a way that I'm not allowed to. You disappeared, not by magic, but by geometry, through the silver brown bones of an olive tree. Your outstretched hand held an orange, carelessly dropped it in my lap. Let the sun set into Guinness' bloody sea. Your eyes further darkened, lost in a landscape of nostalgia. If not my birthplace, then my memory is an occupied country. I have no home, but now there must be no looking back. Last night I dreamt we kissed, the salty taste said, oh, you had see, the Mediterranean could take you, throw you to the other shore, the carcass of a cuttlefish. Don't look back. Waking exiles us all over again. My next poem was, um, is called Roses and Nightingales, and it's, uh, I, I, it, it's kind of inspired by Ottoman <coughs> poetry with all this, with these nightingales, with the lover, and the rose, the beloved, and the rose, the beloved, and the thorns are killing me. <laughs> and um, and uh, it's kind of a bit unhappy because these kind of Ottoman poems, they have to be unhappy, right? It's a rule, right? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe some scholars here can say, no, there's some really jolly ones. I wanted to dedicate it to uh, the love of my life uh, because we're both in a very post-Ottoman space. Dr. Maranitis is, uh, is, from, uh, is from Piraeus, but you know, his roots are in uh, Smyrna and Cheshma. And uh, I don't speak a word of Greek. He doesn't speak a word of <laughs> Turkish. Uh, we communicate in English. But, you know, they, it's not just the affect, there's a whole culture, a whole post-Ottoman culture that is very tangible, I think. I don't want to speak to anyone. But anyway, so I'm going to dedicate it to him, just mainly to embarrass him too. But <laughs> there's nothing sad going on, it's just the poems have to be sad. <laughs> Roses and nightingales. The ghosts won't starve. We won't perish. We owe ourselves to death. So strange what the heart chooses. We were two nightingales in flight who mistook one another for roses. We sang such songs until unruly dawn. Though the flower was imaginary and the gardens of Fenner long gone. It's still the memory of the bloom in the dream. It's a very real song. And I said it in Fenner because lots of Greeks and Turks, uh, Greek speaking Ottomans and Turkish. Thank you. <laughs> Greek and Turkish speaking <laughs> Ottomans <laughs> met at Fenner, and it was a place where it, 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 uh, Greek and Turkish speaking Ottomans were getting it on. That was their cruising spot. <laughs> <laughs> And now I'm going to finish with a poem that brings us... I hope you've got the sense that I've been trying to go through layers of time, mythic time, autobiographical time. And in this one, I'm trying to do that Nietzschean eternal return thing. I'm going mythic, but I've come right 
back to you know energy fields, gas, <laughs> <laughs> and, and and my son, you see, to always make it automatic. Well, my gas, and my son is now like this energy expert. So it's really interesting <laughs> to me that uh, suddenly I know all this technical stuff. So, well, I don't know the one here. So Aphrodite's gas field, because it's actually called Aphrodite's yeah, gas field. Yeah. They've actually called it that. <laughs> <laughs> Aphrodite's gas field is parceled off territory. Data is collected using geophysical methods such as seismic and magnetic surveys, line wire logs while drilling, electric conductivity. Aphra, Aphra, Aphrodite, the great lover turned over, and from under came thunder, from her secret <laughs> corridors where she kept her shit, her legs, her school days, her old sea legs. Welcome to Aphrodite's gas. <laughs> Fresh to the energy market, but old, old territory. Does Field 12 mark the spot where the spunk spattered when they tore my father's balls off? Where I served up, thinking to claim new territories, new worship. I've always attracted beautiful young men. <laughs> <laughs> Tearing their cocks off or showing them off other dresses. Um, women with beards too. Yeah, I've attracted an eclectic crew during my upbringing. <laughs> and affairs of the heart. Yes, affairs of the heart always diverted me. Sold off to the lame Cypriot coppersmith, her fastest. Mourning my lover, son, Adonis. Still recognizable as Mary in your Pieta. Men are from Mars. Or women, you are mine. We are Venus. My father was the Uranus and no mother to speak of. A complicated beginning, told by many liars. Field 12 is where? Is nowhere. The place where it did and did not begin. Where it does and does not begin. Where it will and will not end. Thank you so much.